composed upon an evening of extraordinary splendor and beauty William Wordsworth I had this effulgence disappeared with flying haste, I might have sent, among the speechless clouds, a look of blank astonishment. But tis endued with power to stay, and sanctify one closing day, that frail mortality may see, what is? Ah no, but what can be? Time was when field and watery cove with modulated echoes rang, while choirs of fervent angels sang their vespers in the grove. Or, crowning, star-like, each some sovereign height, warbled, for heaven above and earth below, strains suitable to both. Such holy rite, methinks, if audibly repeated now from hill or valley, could not move sublime or transport, purer love, than doth this silent spectacle, the gleam, the shadow and the peace supreme. To no sound is uttered, but a deep and solemn harmony pervades the hollow vale from steep to steep, and penetrates the glades. Far distant images draw nigh, called forth by wondrous potency of beamy radiance, that embiz, whate'er it strikes, with gem-like hues. In vision exquisitely clear, herds range along the mountainside, and glistening antlers are descried, and gilded flocks appear. Than is the tranquil hour, purpureal eve. But long as godlike wish, or hope divine, informs my spirit, ne'er can I believe that this magnificence is wholly thine. From worlds not quickened by the sun a portion of the gift is won. An intermingling of heaven's pomp is spread on ground which British shepherds tread. Three and, if there be whom broken ties afflict, or injuries assail, yon hazy ridges to their eyes present a glorious scale, climbing suffused with sunny air, to stop, no record hath told where. And tempting fancy to ascend, and with immortal spirits blend. Wings at my shoulders seem to play. But, rooted here, I stand and gaze on those bright steps that heavenward raise their practicable way. Come forth, ye drooping old men, look abroad, and see to what fair countries ye are bound. And if some traveller, weary of his road, hath slept since noon tied on the grassy ground, ye genie, to his covert speed, and wake him with such gentle heat as may attune his soul to meet the dower bestowed on this transcendent hour. For such hues from their celestial urn were wont to stream before mine eye, where e'er it wandered in the morn of blissful infancy. This glimpse of glory, why renewed? Nay, rather speak with gratitude. For, if a vestige of those gleams survived, t'was only in my dreams. Dread power! Whom peace and calmness serve no less than nature's threatening voice, if aught unworthy be my choice, from thee if I would swerve. Oh, let thy grace remind me of the lightful early lost, and fruitlessly deplored. Which, at this moment, on my waking sight appears to shine, by miracle restored. My soul, though yet confined to earth, rejoices in a second birth. Tis past, the visionary splendor fades, and night approaches with her shades.